So when it comes to using delays, it's very important to time them to the track, else they'll stand out and be uh, problematic for you. Uh, it's also important to understand how to shorten your delays and make it so um, they're more effective because a longer delay will make everything sit back further in the mix and may not accomplish what you're trying to accomplish, which might be to just give it some more uh, depth. So understanding how to calculate uh, delay times can be very helpful. Obviously, if you have a plugin that can sync to the tempo and allow you to adjust your times, uh, please go ahead and, and do that. It's, uh, it's very helpful. Do it and don't worry about it. However, if you don't have that, then knowing how to calculate delay times is really helpful. So if you're calculating delay times manually, the first thing you need to do is know that you uh, have the tempo of the song correct. Now, most DAWs will have a default tempo, uh, so you may just have built your entire uh, track around that. Or if you're recording something that you wrote previously, um, knowing how to count the number of beats for 15 seconds, multiply that by four, and that will give you your tempo. So for 15 seconds, count your beats, multiply by four, and then you have it. So if there were 20 beats in the first 15 seconds times four, the uh, tempo of the song is 80 beats per minute. It's pretty simple. You can also use apps or websites uh, to calculate your tempo. Uh, here's a link to that um, if you want to use it. And here's an example of the site. And what's great is you just put your cursor there and then you can tap out your tempo. And that's a great way to uh, figure that out. So delays are measured in musical notes, more specifically quarter notes, one, two, three, four. So how you might calculate a delay is, let's say you had a tempo of 100 BPM, you've, which you figured out by calculating the tempo of your song. Then that would mean a quarter note takes 0.6 seconds. Now, how you know that is you would take 60 seconds and then divide it by the tempo, 100. And that's how you know that 0.6 seconds is for a quarter note or 600 milliseconds. And that's very simple. There's a thousand milliseconds per second. So just times that 0.6 by a thousand and boom, you have your milliseconds. So that's the number you would get to. If you set something like that just on quarter notes and you find that your delay is simply too long, this gets real easy. All you gotta do is just divide it in half. So for an eighth note, cause you remember we started with quarter notes. So for an eighth note, divide that in half, that'll be 300 milliseconds. Cause remember we were at 600. For a 16th note, divided the 300 in half again, 150 milliseconds. And then the same for 32nd note, 64th, 128th, 256. You can really dial that down a lot, which is fine if you want it to be very short and you don't want it to be too far back in your mix. Or, and I love how I spelled that uh, wrong, O-R, <laughs> use a delay calculator online. Here's an example of a delay calculator um, that I've used in the past, and it's got some great information on delays and your frequencies here, which can be helpful. So definitely check this out. Here is the address for you. And use that to calculate your delays. You can also calculate delays with other notes Quarter notes are typically the most common, but you could do dotted eighths or you could do triplets. And if you were doing that, if you were doing dotted eighths, that can simply just be your delay time times 1.5, and that will give you what your setting should be. Uh, same with triplets here, uh, except it's times uh, 0.667. And the thing with triplet or dotted note time delays is that they can sometimes work a little better in the track and uh, get you more of that, and I've, I've, made, I've said this term before, that glue, that cohesiveness uh, in the track. So they can blend a little better. So that is just another way you can calculate uh, delay times if you want to.